Hello everybody, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming bringing you another video. Join all the videos and content we produce. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, click on that like button, and don't be afraid to share. Don't forget to click on the notification button, customize it however you want, but that way you're notified whenever we publish another video. Hello everyone, welcome to another Diablo 3 video here for season 27. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Z barb, so the zero damage barbarian, the support barb for group play. Uh, this is probably one of the easiest seasons ever that I can remember to be a support barb. Um, and the reason for that is that the unique uh, affix that you can add from the sanctified is uh, that whirlwind pulls in and holds all enemies within 25 yards. So you can try to just drag them with you as you go. Uh, before we look more at the gear and get into it, let's show you what it looks like in action. It's just going to be a quick little video here. So just for fun, we're going to go into a 130. Of course, there's nothing around here for me to instantly jump on. Oh, bad map. But anyways, this is all it looks like. Is As you spin around, you kind of group them up and they just follow you wherever you go which makes this one of the easiest seasons to be a barb. The survivability aspect is still there where you get to charge every charge or stomp every eight seconds, rock the band of might, but otherwise like you're incredibly tanky. Uh, it does use an esoteric gem, but it's pretty simple. The main thing that we gotta do is just avoid kind of, I guess, the ground or whatever random things that the maps might have in way. Of course, there the pack that I'm pulling along is pretty uh, giant, so they're challenging to drag. But as you can see, we're just pulling them along, pulling them along. And you kind of get the idea. I'm intentionally trying to lose the big guys so you can see the small ones. But as you can see, we're just dragging them around wherever we want to go. And the trick is to not get too far ahead of them because then you'll lose them. Um, but it is much easier to drag them once, like if they're actually smaller. The fact that these guys are so big is why it's so problematic there to kind of drag them. And then you kind of just navigate your way around the map, avoiding things not to get stuck on them. You can drag them through drawer, doors. Not, and uh, so you can basically do whatever you want with them. Just dragging them along, creating nice big stacks for your DPS to blow up. So that's enough about that. Let's jump into looking at the items. So the items that we use in this build are two piece savages. So the reason we're using this is the two piece bonus is a double C effectiveness of shouts. And uh, the fact that you deal dumb and double damage to feared frozen or stunned enemies doesn't matter because we are a zero damage class, but it's to double the effectiveness of our shouts for our teammates. The other set that we are using for the weapons is we're going to be using Bokathos' Oath. So this is the, the two-piece bonuses increases Fury Generation by 15. And during Whirlwind, you gain 45% increased attack speed and movement. So this just makes it really simple. We can spend spin for days. Our Fury is rarely ever going down. And when we hit things, we're going to be generating Fury. So we're going to be fine there. And the move speed is nice. Uh, for our Helm... We are going to be using Leoric's Crown, and this is because we want the affix there where it is going to increase the effectiveness of any gem socketed into this. So it goes up to 100%, which would double the effectiveness of the gem. And then we're using diamonds in our helm to get cooldown reduction because we want to be able to have ignore pain up as often as possible. Really, we want 100% uptime on it for our other DPS to give them the damage mitigation as well as they can't be frozen, feared, and all that stuff. Our shoulders, we are using Mantle Channeling just to give us 25% uh, dur more damage reduction while we're spinning. Our neck, using Flavor of Time. This is mainly for Conduit, so we get that double duration for the Conduit to help nuke down Elites and Trash. And really, there's not that's the most effective neck we could have. Chest piece, we are using the Aquila Caras for the 50% damage mitigation. You should always be at... Full Fury, so we'll get that constant 50% uh, damage mitigation. And again, we're using diamonds in all our gear because we need resist all. Because the only vulnerability we really have in this build is to magic damage. 
uh, strength turns to armor, so we're already going to have tons of armor. So this is just going to help give us some survivability. And then for bracers, I'm wearing the Nemesis bracers because this will cause shrines and pylons to spawn an enemy champion, which is essential for pushing rifts. For our belt, we are using Pride of Cassius. This increases the duration of Ignore Pain by up to six seconds. You really need to get it to six seconds to maximize your 100% uptime. Four seconds just isn't enough, so you need to get the, uh, find one with six seconds on the belt. Then we're using the Oculus Ring. So this is going to spawn a Oculus Circle that DPS can stand in it and get uh, up to an 85% damage buff. And then this is the ring that we're most likely going to sanctify just to force it to give us that mandatory 85% for making it primal. It's just the most efficient one that we could get. So most builds will have that. If, unless you already have a primal one, then you might be able to go do it somewhere else. And of course, as mentioned previously, the sanctified that we're trying to have is Whirlwind pulls in and holds all enemies within 25 yards. For the other ring, we're using Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. This is going to help with our cooldown to help keep Ignore Pain off CD so we can keep that up on the whole group. And then the Illusory Boots, which come from Bounty Rewards um, in the Bounty Caches. It just lets you move unhindered through enemies, so that's just a nice mobility item there. For our legendary gems, so we're using Gogok of Swiftness. This is going to increase our dodge percentage. Um, it stacks up to 15 times, so it's going to give us more dodge for melee. And we're also going to gain 1% cooldown reduction per stack of Swiftness, so up to 15% uh, CDR as well. We're also using Esoteric, so this is going to give us 60% non-physical damage reduction. And then while we're below 50%, our resistances are increased by 75%. So this is just going to help us survive in the higher GRs. And then lastly, we are using Gem of Efficacious Toxin. So poison all enemies hit for 30 for a bunch of damage, although that doesn't matter. But it's like the main thing is that rank 25, all enemies you poison take 10% increased damage from all sources and deal 10% less. So that's why we're rocking that, just to help our DPS deal more damage and make them take less damage. For the cube, this does depend on whether you have a Necro in the group or not. I was pushing twos with a wizard, so I have Executioner on. So Executioner will automatically kill any, any enemy with less than 10% health. So that just helps on Rift Guardians and Elites and all that sort of thing. You can never go wrong with that. An alternative, if you do have a Necro in the group, because of course a Necro has uh, the Aura of Frailty or can cast frailty with early graves so that will automatically execute an enemy at 15 or 18 percent depending on if they're running early grave and in that case if they are then you would run measure schmitz so that will reduce the cooldown off one of your skills by one second whenever an enemy is killed so that'll help your cooldowns come off faster we are also using so because we're wearing nems we're using strong arms in the cube so and I cube this because it just automatically gives us the 30% increased damage here. So strong arms is enemies hit by knockback suffer 30% increased damage for six seconds. So by cubing that, I get the automatic 30%. And then lastly, for our jewelry, I'm using Band of Might because this, of course, after casting Furious Charge, Ground Stomp, or Leap, we take 80% reduced damage for eight seconds. So that's just going to help with our survivability. So that's why I've charged here. I'm charging at least once every eight seconds to proc the band of might to give us that survivability. Lastly, taking a look at the skills. So we're using War Cry with Veteran's Warnings. So this is just going to unleash a Rallying Cry to increase armor for us and our allies by 20% for two minutes. It also increases dodge chance while War Cry is active by 30%. So increase their armor, massive toughness, and their dodge huge. We're also using Ancient Spear with Rage Flip. So this, I didn't use it while well in the gameplay, but basically we're gonna throw our spear and it will pull an enemy to us. So that'll just help in case something falls out of our whirlwind spin that we're dragging everything around a lot, a, along with. Yeah, tongue tied myself there. So we use that just to help drag things along. Uh, then of course we have Whirlwind with Wind Shear. So while we're whirlwinding, we move at 100% movement speed. And we're going to gain one Fury for every enemy struck. 
Then I'm using Furious Charge here with a Merciless Assault to proc my Band of Might. The reason I'm doing that is I didn't want to use Ground Stomp and then be stomping and stunning things and then they might fall out of the Whirlwind. Also, when you run with a Necro, the Necro is going to most likely stun with their armor on with this location so to proc their Chrismans. So then they can control that. So basically the Furious Charge here, it's just I have... um. Merciless Assault, because it's going to reduce my charge time by two seconds for every enemy I hit. So if I charge into a big group, I'll just instantly have it back. Then one of our most important skill here is Ignore Pain with Mob Rule. So it reduces all damage taken by 50%, and you gain immunity to all control impairing effects for five seconds. And then allies within 50 yards also gain 25% damage reduction and immunity to control impairing effects for five seconds. But with our boot the boots with our belt the pride of cassius that goes up to 11 seconds and then lastly we have threatening shout with falter so we're going to just show cause the enemies within 25 yards to falter and take 25 percent increased damage from all sources for six seconds so we want to use that right before our dps's big coe window if they have it so if you're in comms they'll probably call that out and then you want to falter them to make them take that increased damage you can pretty much have it up all the time with the CDR that we have, but if it, if you don't quite have it off CD always, just you want to use it right before the rotation. So for the passives that I'm using, I'm using Superstition, which reduces all non-physical damage by 20%. Uh, when we take damage from a range or elemental attack, we have a chance to generate two Fury. Kind of minor, it's mainly just the reduce all physical damage by 20%. We're using Inspiring Presence because it doubles the duration of our shouts. And also it gives our us and our allies a 3% of our max life regen per second for the duration of the shout. And then we are using Nerves of Steel here. So if we receive fatal damage, instead it uh, just reduces us to 15% life. And for three seconds afterwards, we take 95% reduced damage and are immune to control impairing effects. So this is just a safety measure just in case we might die because we need to survive to keep our buffs up for the team and as well keep the mobs grouped and help progress through the rift. Then lastly, I'm using Relentless. So while below 35%, all my skill costs are 50% less and my life's periphery spent is doubled and all damage taken is reduced by 50%. So there'll be plenty of times in high GRs where I might be fluctuating below the 50 or 35%. This is just to help keep me alive so I can keep the team alive. After all, I'm not dealing any damage. I'm just buffing them and helping stack and create groups for them. If I go down, um, it's really impactful to not have the ignore pain on the groups, especially when in the big GRs, when you're dragging sometimes two or three, sometimes even four elites along all at the same time. So that is the build in a nutshell with all the skills and items. It is super fun to play. It is a lot easier than it has ever been. That whirlwind affix that just drags things along is hysterical, kind of the first time you see it, especially um, if you did not know it existed. It just makes Z barbing so much easier, and it's uh, a lot of fun. Anybody can really pick it up before if you're hesitant to trying it out just because it seems intimidating. This is a season to try it out. It's pretty simple. You just spin to win and drag them along, and you're all good to go. Anyhow, that's enough for me for this video. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Do my best to answer them. And as always, we appreciate any likes, shares, and subscribe. So please click those buttons. And of course, come join me on Twitch. We're streaming on Thursdays and Saturdays. Come check us out. Come hang out. We'll run some keys and have just have some fun. So until next time, I hope to see you on Twitch. And if not, see you at the next video.